Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, thrill six and spook six of all ages. My name is Coach Chow, Doncaster born, but built for theme parks, and welcome to a very special theme park preview where today we'll be previewing the upcoming trip to York Maze Alice Scream 2021. We're back with the trip, so make sure you do see me there at your mate's Alice Scream this Friday, um, October the... I think it's the 8th or the 9th, I'm not too sure what day it is, but it is this Friday coming. I'm not too sure exactly the full date, but uh, I know it is this Friday, the opening night. I will be there on Friday for the opening night, so please, 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 if you do see me, don't be afraid to come and say hi. Uh, and if you want a photo, then please say. Uh, but in this particular video, we're going to go through the mazes. I'm going to share with you the official story of the, of the attraction, just to give you an official look and a whole feel of the theme of the uh, whole experience so for now guys please like the video if you loved it comment down below your thoughts and opinions subscribe if you are new around here click the notification bell so you never miss a youtube video before we get started looking into the scare mazes the side shows the food and drink options and also my overall first predictions let's have a look at the 2019 hello scream trailer just to give you guys a bit of a feel about what's coming up in the attraction. This is from York Maze officially. Take it away, guys. October 23rd, 2007. Elvington, York. Local farmer Tom Piercy buys Dunnington Lodge, a site on the outskirts of the city. He sets out to create York Maze, a seasonal attraction for families to enjoy. But no one could have prepared him for the tragedy and despair that would follow his good intentions. October 26, 2010. Three years on from the maze's conception, and Tom Piercy looks to expand into the Halloween season. He sets the team to work on digging foundations for the maze's first haunted house. All goes well, until something stirs beneath the soil. Thick white bones begin to surface. Bones too big to be cattle or any farmyard animal. Small primate rib cages, long winding spines, and piercing teeth on crooked jaws. Unfazed, the unnerved farmer continues with his dig. October 28, 2010. Tom's mind begins to linger on the digger's findings. He begins to research the site alone. Finding nothing to aid his initial investigation, he retires to bed. 2.25 a.m. Tom receives a phone call from his night watchman. Tom, something's not quite right at the maze tonight. There's all sorts of stuff going on. I'm, I'm hearing noises and animals and, and screams and stuff, and I thought there must be someone on the side, but I, I can't find anyone. I don't think I can do this much longer. I'm going to have to leave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to let you down, Tom, but I just don't want to stick around. After that night's horrifying events, the petrified watchman vowed never to work at York Maze again. This tipped Tom over the edge. He wanted to get to the bottom of the disturbances immediately, so he sought his solicitor's aid. There, in a heap of documents, diaries and plans, the following harrowing story formed before the farmer. October 22nd, 1873. The C.W. Tawney's Travelling Circus journeys north for its final performance of the season. Led by their headstrong ringmaster, Mr. Charles William Tawney's, the troupe look to impress their new audience. Charles has his eye fixated on the Knavesmire in York, yet their season was going appallingly. Their master and commander had driven the circus into financial despair, for his obsession in experimenting with machinery and invention had cost him no small fortune. Steam-powered engines of immense complexity, concoctions, mechanisms, and a flood of new operators. A glimpse into the future, he would call it. A glimpse that would go overlooked. October 30th, 1873. Thirteen tickets are sold on the Knavesmire. Charlie and his machinery are heckled and booed from the stage yet again. Leaving his performers at the roadside, a downtrodden Charlie flees to the ye old star inn on Stonegate to collect his thoughts. Grabbing a drink, his eyes fall upon a group of rowdy locals playing cards and drinking whiskey. The barman informs him quietly that the man at the end of the table 
is one Leonard Dunnington, a farmer, a drunk, and a gambler. Charlie's eyes glint, an opportunity to win a fortune. Joining the table, Charlie gets to grips with the game. A master of trickery, sleight of hand, and illusion, he could soon turn the table in his favor. Hand after hand goes by until Leonard's stack drops short. Charlie is on top, and as planned, everything is going his way. With nothing left, an angered Leonard drinks deep into his liquor. Charlie seizes his moment, a wager. He proposes to Leonard that if he is to win the next hand, the farmer must offer him and his circus lodgings for the winter season. If he is to lose, Leonard may take back all of his money and he will never see nor hear of Charles W. Tawney's again. The deal is struck. One swift flick of his wrist and Charlie had taken the game. His circus would have a home for the winter months. Leonard was left furious and fooled. October 31st, 1873. The troop arrives at Dunnington Lodge. Leonard watches as a fleet of acrobats, clowns, animals, dwarves and freaks parade their way through his land. A huge tent is erected to house the animals for the season and the circus troop settles down for the evening. But old habits die hard. Much to the dismay of his performers, Charlie takes over the blacksmith's quarters to continue his work on his futuristic attraction. Leonard drinks himself into a bottle of whiskey in his barn. A laughing stock to his friends for losing the bet, company arrives. Corny, the circus's lead clown, joins him for a drink. Leonard spares no time in damning Charlie to hell, but Corny reveals that he too loathes the ringmaster, dropped as the headline act to make way for smoke, cogs, and metal. They drink on, united in their hate. A few sips more, and Corny lets slip the ultimate fumble of words. Charles Tawney is a cheat, a trickster, an illusionist, and a master of cards. With this, Leonard works himself into a rage. Grabbing his pitchfork, he sets off into the farmyard to get his revenge. Corny does his best to stop the frantic farmer, but in a blind search, the pitchfork pierces his stomach. He dies in the barn as the first domino to fall and the catastrophe to follow. In his pursuit across the land, Leonard encounters his man. Despite his protests and his appeals to the angered farmer, Charlie meets his maker. Leonard's pitchfork slices through his throat and gasping, he falls into a bloody heap. Leonard does not stop there. He hurls a lamp onto the nearby hay bale, his final act of madness. An inferno ignites. Flames engulf every tent, barn, and object in their path. Dunnington Lodge becomes a ball of smoke and fire. The animals perish. The performers are crushed and choked. The circus troupe suffers due to Charlie's trickery. Leonard makes his way through the fiery walls of destruction, content with his ultimate act of revenge. Bottle in hand, he watches his lodge burn to the ground. 37 men and 12 women died on that night. They were all buried on the farm. Performers next to their ringmaster, animals next to their keepers. Leonard Dunnington was arrested, trialed and hanged at Tyburn Gallows at York Castle for the massacre at Dunnington Lodge. He died alone. It is not known where he is laid to rest. And now... It's said that 200 years later, in the unearthing at the burial ground of the C.W. Tony Circus, Tom Piercy has unleashed the spirits of the dead, freeing their restless souls. Whilst they remain quiet through the summer season at Halloween, they return to walk the land, seeking revenge against their destroyer and anyone who will stand in their way. Will you be brave enough to enter York Mazes Hello Scream? 
There we are, that is the official story from the Halo Screen 2019 trailer. Of course, the events theme has not changed for this year, so that is the most up-to-date one we've got. Massive shout-out to York Maze themselves for the content in that video. That was their video uh, showing you the story behind this year's Halo Scream and the past couple of Halo Screams. Uh, but now let's go into detail about each of the mazes. Now, each of the mazes are remaining the same. There is no new mazes this this year um, it's just gonna be the same maze lineup as, as, as last as the previous event but let's have a look at each individual maze in detail and share with you the story behind each one so first up, it's 2073. Joseph Clement has recalibrated his time machine in an attempt to avert the tragic events of the past that have cursed the farm. Unfortunately, instead of returning to the past, he takes you into a future where you'll be thrown into a post-Trump nuclear apocalypse. Society is broken down and the streets are inhabited by zombie-like creatures sick with radiation poisoning. Martial law has been enforced and the army are your best hope for survival unless they've been infected too. Discover the history of Hallow Scream and learn more about Joseph Clement, the talented engineer and inventor and the terrible circus fire that destroyed the farm in the story of Hallow Scream with that trail that we saw earlier. But that is the whole story of 2073. The whole time machine attempt to avoid the f events of the farm going into the post-Trump apocalypse. And I think this is one for the ages. I'll give you my overall thoughts from past years on the mazes later in the video. Uh, but that is 2073. And now let's have a trip inside the most evil funhouse ever created. It was one of the newer mazes for 2019. One of two new mazes for 2019. It was Corny's Corn Evil, a redo of Reincarnation that opened back in 2013. Corny, the famous circus clown, was murdered on this site by Leonard Dunnington in 1873. His designs for a house of confusion were discovered with his remains when they were unearthed on the farm. We rebuilt Corny's fun house and soon the spirit of the long dead circus clowns returned each Halloween. Now ten years later we discovered Corny's plans for an even more twisted sinister fun house, a world where rooms shrink, spin around and defy gravity. Your past ways lead to apparent dead ends you come face to face with your own image contorted in fear of the maze of mirrors. Enter Corny's Cornival where demonic clowns and mind-bending illusions will have you questioning your sanity and begging for the exit. Next up is the Meat Locker Extravaganza of Horror known as the Flesh Pot. It was known that the farmer who lived at this farm in Victorian times, Leonard Dunnington, had his own slaughterhouse where he killed and butchered his own meat for sale on his markets in York. Rumours were abound that he'd always have more meat to sell than his small farm could provide. The locals had talked of how he must have been rustling cattle and pigs from neighbouring farms at night. The truth was worse than this far worse. It is alleged that he would visit the seedless parts of York in the early hours of the morning, walk in the smog-filled streets with his horse and cat, watching for drunks and whores who he could prey upon. He would sit them on the back of the cart and offer them a drink from his gin bottle, heavily spiked with Londonum. In a matter of moments, they would pass out and fall backwards onto the car. A tarpaulin would be pulled over them, and the next time they came round, they would be hanging upside down, looking at the slaughterhouse floor. Their screams would be masked by the pigs squealing in the pens next door, as they too awaited the knife. Leonard took pleasure in removing their skins whilst they were still alive, and then butchered them as he did his pigs. Once they bled out, he joined them up. The poor quality cuts along with the innards, feet, hands and heads were boiled in a giant stewing pot made for his meat for his famous pies. The better cuts were sold as pork joints in his stall alongside his other meats. People flocked to his stall and talked about eating his meat made them happy, blissfully unaware that the meat they were eating was human flesh laced with opiates. Leonard Dunnington was tried and hung following the famous circus tragedy of 1873. It was claimed that he confessed his heinous actions to the priest before his hanging, but nothing could ever be proved, and the authorities kept this from the public for fear of causing an outrage in the city. The priest's diary is held in the Balthwick Institute of York and has only recently come to light, casting further shadows over the farm's gruesome past. 
Next up, the second of the two new mazes back in 2019, the last Hello Scream event. It is the Singularity. It was believed that inventor Joseph Clement perished in the circus fire on the farm, but his body was never found, and rumours persisted that he had created a time machine. It seems those rumours were true. Clement travelled forward in time to 2073, where he encountered a broken world where machines had taken over and war raged between robots and humans. Clement believed that a human-robot hybrid could bring peace to the world he returned to our time, the point in history he saw where machines had first achieved consciousness. His vision is to create a new machine species that combines the best of man and machine, one true perfect being he calls the Singularity. Enter his laboratory for you see for yourself, his plans to make this vision a reality. But beware the process is not yet perfected and more human test subjects are needed for his warped experiments. And finally, Barnageddon 3D, the workshops at Dunnington Lodge became a hotbed of industrial activity during this time that the circus was on the farm. Men wearing masks spread the heat and smoke to try and make challenged mechanical visions come to life. Most of them perished when old grey the bull elephant crashed into the buildings as the great fire raged. Steam pipes burst, gas fires erupted, bodies were crushed and trapped. As the fire raged, the roof collapsed and the cellars under the barns gave way, sucking everything into a subterranean world of chaos. Now enter the kaleidoscopic world of Barnageddon 3D. Put on your 3D glasses to reveal a perplexing space shifting world where your eyes can't be trusted to separate what's real from illusion. So fantastic scare attractions there, but what else is on offer at this year's Hell of Scream? Let's find out. New for 2021, we have the Fire and Light Show. Don't miss the spectacular new Fire and Fire and Laser Show, uh, Fire and Light Show with lights, lasers, flames, and state-of-the-art projection mapping, all set to a banging soundtrack. Regular shows throughout the evening next to the new Food Court Marquee. We also have the Waltzers Ride, but this year we'll also have a Dodgems and a Miami Ride. Sighted next to the new Food Court Marquee, additional ride charges will apply. Note that York Maze is now a cashless venue. You will need to pay by card for the rides. At the heart of the haunted house attractions, the entertainment zone is housed under the giant marquee with a carnival feel and bar and includes sideshows, moving entertainers, music, zombie dancers and more. Grab a drink from the bar and prepare to marvel at the death defying acts on stage. Fire eating, sword swallowing, escapology, illusion and more. 30 minute shows running on the hour every hour between 7pm and 10pm. Now we need to have a look a little bit more in what food and drink offerings there are for this year. Now there's a brand new food court marquee where you can also watch the new Fire and Light show. Now the bar is located by the main stage in the Scare Zone marquee and serves a range of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks as per usual from previous events. We have Killer Coffee, we have Chirios Amigos, we have Il Diablo Pizzas, we have Corny's Dirty Fries and the Dead Good Burger Company. So a big range of food there from York Maze Hallow Screen. Now it's time to share my initial thoughts on the mazes on the 2019 event and also share my predictions ahead of the brand new event debuting on the 8th of October. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Six of All Ages and Spook Six of All Ages. That is the Scare Maze lineup, like I said, unchanged from 2019. But there's a couple of new things in there on the entertainment side of things, the brand new fire and light show for 2021 as well as the new food court marquee and a couple of new fairground rides with additional charges so great there for the whole family to enjoy now in terms of the fairground rides i don't think i'll be doing them in my I, it's you know I, I i don't want to go into detail but i don't th i've done fairground rides before so there's no need to do them again but the scare mazes, everything like that, I will be there Friday, 8th of October, this week. In fact, by the time you're watching this, it's tomorrow. By the time you're watching it, it's tomorrow the day. And I'll see you for the opening of the opening night. The opening of the opening night. Perfect, Grammar Coast Chow. Perfect grammar. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys there. If you do see me at the event, don't be afraid to say hi if you're a fan of the channel. If you're going to the event, Comment down below 
And yeah, let's just share my thoughts on everything going on. So first of all, I want to just share my thoughts quickly before we go into the mazes and my thoughts on them from 2019 about the new stuff. So first of all, talk about the new food court marquee and the new additional uh, fairground rides. Nice to have some new variety on the fairground rides. Obviously, the waltz has been there for a few years now, so it's nice to have that variety and have a couple more uh, fairground rides added to the selection. Uh, the new food court marquee. It'd be interesting to see what that will look like and how it's all laid out and how it's all designed and landscaped, etc. With the with the scare zone marquee. Um, and also the new fire and light show that's gonna be very exciting as well I can't wait for that and I'll get some humongously great shots of that I'll ch get the best quality of shots as possible for the fire and light show uh, Now the scare mazes the main thing about this attraction the scare mazes um, Obviously the Romeo entertainment I can expect them to be fantastic as per usual shout out to the team at York Mace House Scream They're a huge fan of this channel and uh, yeah, they're just wonderful people so shout out to everyone who's going to be scare acting uh, on Friday and also the other days at York Mace House Scream I can't wait to see you all there be on your A game I'm looking out for great actors being an actor myself so no pressure <laughs> uh, but going into the scare mazes I mean like I said unchanged from 2019 I've said that multiple times in this video now 2073 Corn is Corn Evil uh, Barnegadon 3D the Singularity and the Flash Pot uh, first of all the, let's talk about the two newest ones let's talk about them in sort of newer order so going on then with the first the two new ones from 2019 the Singularity and Corn is Corn Evil I said Corn is Corn Evil was a much needed um, well in my opinion I think it is a much needed refurbishment to Reincarnation Reincarnation was great and yeah, don't forget I've done reincarnation the past couple of years before it was changed. And yeah, I agree. I think it was amazing. I thought it was absolutely incredible. The Coins Coin Evil changes, I loved it even more. Absolutely loved it. The singularity, nice twisted sci-fi walkthrough. And in fact, I've got a daytime walkthrough of both mazes from 2019 Halloween, the slightly younger age group event that I was invited to. I was invited to the um, VIP uh, preview week that, that I think it was the day before or the week before Halloween was officially launched. It was the first year they were launching it. We did day, daylight walkthroughs of the Cornish Carnival, the Singularity, and we also did a uh, walk through through I think yeah about again 3d where you have a, a bit of a water splash moment on that so go and check out all three of those videos because they're really worth watching I guarantee you and if if, if they'll let me if they'll let me I might do walkthroughs of the mazes here so uh, you know stay tuned just in case you get any maze walkthrough videos but if not you've got the vlog to look forward to as well as the trip review uh, now like I say uh, singularity sci-fi walkthrough as you'll see but from the daytime walkthrough a couple of years ago um, really twisted psychological experiments really lovely theming a bit of a head chopper scare element with the giant swinging ball over your head you have to really duck and you know people say I'm very tall you have to really duck down so you know again it's a wonderful attraction um, then with the other ones, uh, 2073, again, wonderfully done, brilliant acting in 2019, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, you also got Bond again 3D, again, another fantastic maze, you know, the 3D glass just make it even more better. Um, the 3D glass I was a bit confused of at first when I first did it in its first year, but as soon as I got grown accustomed to it, the more I got used to it, the more I loved it. So, um, again, it'd be great to step in there again. Um, and then the flash part. The flash part is obviously now the oldest maze there. And this is just, this is going to be its, uh, technically its fifth, but obviously operation-wise, because 2020, obviously there was COVID-19. Um, obviously this year will technically be its fourth year in operation, excluding that fifth one. But... Yeah, I, I get why. I get why it's, you know. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it, you know, in, in retrospect terms, it's the f fifth anniversary of the Flash Part. Introduced back in 2016, five years ago. And uh, it should be interesting because obviously the older mazes seem to go out after a few years at, at max. So, you know, the other one that sort of survived over a few years is Barnegadon. It's Barnegadon 3D. So... 
maybe this year could be the last year for the flash pot i don't know i'll save for every minute in, in case it is but i mean d it depends with all the mates to be fair you know it could be 273's last year it could be coins con evil or singularities last year it could be one again 3d's last year who knows uh it depends what they've got in the pipe works for next year but i'm gonna save it every minute of these mazes 100 percent so you know, in terms of expectations going into tomorrow, going into Friday, I think that my expectations are quite neutral. I'm sort of keeping it balanced because I like to be surprised as well as entertained that I know I was going to be entertained. Um, so I think that I'm keeping my expectations at a very neutral stage at the moment. And then it's just going to go up and up and up and up. So... Shout out to everyone at your mate's house screen because I know it's going to be an absolutely wicked night. I know there's going to be loads of people there. Uh, f uh, it, uh, not families. I can guarantee you with that there won't be families because it is a very uh, teenage to adult event. Uh, but um, I know there's going to be loads of teenagers there, loads of adults, um, any celebrities that come on the night, uh, any other content creators that are there as well. Don't be afraid to say hi if you want to, if you see me. Uh, same with you as well. If I see you content creators, I'll just say hi because I'm that kind of a person. Uh, but um, I've got a feeling it's going to be a wicked night and it's going to be uh, a wonderful scare event to do. So uh, thank you so, so much, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, my name is Coast Child. Keep living the coast life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a hollow scream-tastic day, and I'll see you there tomorrow night.